Helion on the Golan Heights with Lieutenant Colonel Paniker. Dear guest, it's a privilege and honor to open this meeting to commemorate the centenary of the Battle of Haifa. On Monday, 23rd, September 23rd, 1918, at about 2.45 at noon, fire seized at the city of Haifa, and suddenly there was silence everywhere. Few hours later, there were two separate episodes. Near the Great Mosque, the mayor of the city, Hassan Shukri, gave his sword to General King as a symbol of surrender. West of the city, in an olive grove, the body of Major Takur Dalpatsing, the hero of Haifa, was cremated. <coughs> Today, here in Haifa, we are commemorating 100 years to the battle and the memory of the brave Indian soldiers. Brigadier Joda, please. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom and good morning. Uh, His Highness Maharaja Gatsingji of Jodhpur, David Handel, the chairman of the Haifa History Society, my friend Eagle Graver, the secretary of Haifa History Society, and I see my old friend Alex Ringer, who's taken such beautiful photographs in 2010 the first ceremony that uh, we had here. Uh, Ali Liran, the historian of the First World War, who are Dhananjay Singhji and uh, Uspender Singhji Bharti, who are accompanying His Highness Maharaja Sahib of Jodhpur, and uh, to all members of the Haifa History Society. It's, it's really uh, overwhelming uh, to be here uh, on the centenary of this Battle of Haifa. I'm, I'm actually so grateful to, basically to the Haifa History Society, who has been in the forefront of bringing out uh, this, and they ensured that the Jodhpur and the Mysore dances get their rightful place. And uh, it's all credit to you that today, uh, not only in India, where it was known uh, since long, it's now become worldwide that everyone is talking about the Battle of Haifa. Uh, for this, I think all members of the Haifa History Society deserves a lot of credit for it. That you, as as Eagle gave me that story that Dr. Cronjohn, uh, who was flying in uh, uh, for a conference in Bombay, he landed at Jodhpur at the Umed Bhavan Palace and in the Risala restaurant he saw the statue of Major Dalpat Singh where at the base it is written Hero of Haifa. He asked the people there, who is this? I belong to Haifa and I don't know about him. And then he published a small news article in the, in the Israeli papers here and the Haifa History Society picked up that story, approached the Indian Embassy and 2009 I gave them all the account of this battle and they, since 2010 it had become an annual affair that uh, this battle of Haifa is commemorated here. It's behind your back. Professor Kronzon, the statue, Umayyad Bahawan and the article, 1994. Uh, they saw this statue, this is in the Risala restaurant coming down. Oh, that one? Huh? So, so this doctor stayed here. And so in the Risala restaurant, this, and came and published a small article, Hero of Haifa, who is he? 
and then the story picked up and got carried on and on. I wrote to him, he sent him his regards, he can't come. So, you know, uh, I feel it is extremely special for us. In fact, this September 18 is historic in itself that we, we have amongst us Maharaja of Jodhpur himself. Last 10 years I have been requesting Maharaja Sahib that uh, he must uh, come during the centenary commemoration. And I am so happy that he took out his time. So he wanted from a very long time to visit and probably this occasion provided a great opportunity and I am really thrilled that uh, the Maharaja Sahib has come uh, and is amongst us today. Uh, this itself is a very historic occasion in that sense. Uh, now personally to me Haifa is, uh, coming to Haifa is like going for a pilgrimage. I remember my father narrating various stories. But that, that used to begin after two packs of whiskey about the Battle of Haifa sometimes. But that stories were when I was very small. And by the time his stories finished, we, I used to go off to sleep. So uh, the city of Haifa is very close to my heart. And uh, I'm so happy that uh, the book that I began uh, to write uh, with a lot of support from His Highness. I've been able to complete and after I finish my two minute speech, I request Maharaj Sahib to unveil the book and it will be available uh, about 20 days later uh, everywhere. It's a beautiful account that I have gone around the nook and corner of the entire world searching for anything and everything that is available uh, about the Jodhpur Lancers and the Mysore Lancers. So when I came 2010 uh, and then last year also I came. To, yeah, this is this is this in the is same in 2010. 2010, when in this society itself, he was in the group defense society. Air Commodore Azair Ator. His wife belongs to Jodhpur. Mm -hmm. And it's our combination that uh, I kept giving him the story and he kept building. And this is how the first time the Indian Army. He was what? He's, he's, uh, he's still in service. Okay. He was Defense Air Commodore. Okay. Defense Attaché. Ajay Ratu. There's always an Air Force officer with the Defense Attaché. Yeah. He's, uh, he's going to be Air Vice Marshal soon. Okay. So last time when I came in November 17 and the Eagle took us to the battle area, the defile, and after seeing the def uh, defile, I picked up pebbles from Mount Carmel to carry home. It was so sacred to me. And in the evening, my wife asked, what are you bringing for me from Haifa? <laughs> I said, I have picked up precious stones for you. <laughs> Israel is famous for diamonds. So she had little inkling, she thought my husband is bringing some diamonds for me. And when I reached there, she said, where are the precious stones? I carried two, three cases of them. I carried in 2010 also. And she threw a few of them on me. <laughs> you took more than 10 kilos. <laughs> you have overweight. But that was on the lighter side. I said there can't be more precious diamonds. These are more precious to me from Mount Carmel. So we have, they find a pride of place in a glass jar in my drawing room in Jodhpur. Uh, we all are aware of this story. I'm not going to narrate it. Uh, incidentally, Jodhpur was here. The battle finished within one hour, you know, with the modern machine guns and the field artillery guns firing on Jodhpur lances. One side was River Kishon and Mount Carmel on the other side. With just a lance and sword, it was a terrific sight. The charge described by, I have got two letters in my book, which you can all probably read it. It was an amazing sight to see bullets firing and the machine guns and the field guns firing on them. Though Jodhpur lost only eight men, but imagine, if you see, I carried out a little analysis. We had seven men of Jodhpur lances killed in action. 34 were wounded here. The 60 horses were killed and 83 horses were wounded. All together, that means 180 people got bullet injuries, whether it was a horse or a man because horse is a moving target. So the fire was not accurate because they were galloping.
But imagine the kind of intense fire, and that's what Lieutenant Knight, who was the special service officer with the Jodhpur Lancers, says in his letter to his father, seven days after the battle, that our casualties were extraordinarily light. And this happened because of three, four factors. Uh, they had achieved, uh, 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 the field marshal Arandi in his one of the dispatches says the victory was achieved because of the speed, good order, surprise that the Jodhpur Lancers achieved. And one of the factors I'm not going to the detail was because of the enfilade fire also, because the machine guns were mounted on a height. And while they were firing, there was a gap in between and the Jodhpur made beautiful use of the dead ground also. So till 400 yards, they, the machine gunners actually couldn't see the horsemen coming in. And with the enfilade fire coming in, so between those two, the gap, they mounted and crossed the defile. The Turks then began to run. And the victory was achieved within uh, one hour that night, uh, that afternoon. That's, yes, that's the end of the battle. This is that uh, Paris Square. This building and both these buildings are uh, still, existing. still existing. And uh, this afternoon, Eagle is taking us there. So that is all I have to say. Uh, thank you very much. I will now request His Highness Maharaj Sahib to uh, come and do the honors of uh, uh, unveiling the book. David. <laughs> Chance. That's the memorial which is in Tin Moti in Delhi. And furthermore, when our Prime Minister visited here, he went to the site of the battle and he got back to India, he renamed the circle Haifa. Haifa Shock. Haifa Shock. You have a place that we will see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, it's a beautiful treasure for all of you. This book, it brings entire things. And uh, once you read it, uh, it will be pretty clear. Thank you. Thank you. Ellie? 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 Ellie?